Let's talk a little bit about the Chequers plan and what changes you want to see. Do you want something a little more like a Canada-style free trade agreement, as Jacob Rees-Mogg does, and I spoke to him earlier? Uh, I think um, we need a free, trail, a free trade arrangement with the European Union because <clears throat> that's what they want. And they don't want Chequers because Chequers gives uh, peculiar access to their market. They don't want that without the four freedoms. So um, we should go back to a free trade deal. Canada is just a name for it. <coughs> it uh, deals with Japan, South Korea, etc. But a free trade deal would be better. It gives us a much cleaner break. The one thing that they have to do is the EU has to respond by saying the Irish backstop, the problem over the border is non-existent. You can do all this without a hard border. And then we're home and dry. But uh, Chequers itself, I don't think, flies in any, any description at all. Is it possible for Theresa May to stay in post to change her plan from Chequers to something that looks more like a Canada deal? Because she doesn't sound very moved to change at the moment, and her ministers don't. No, but I, I'm hoping that they will get around to that, because it makes sense. Right now, Chequers has been, we've been told by the EU, Chequers doesn't work. So uh, the government has to come back with something better. And I think the free trade arrangement, which was published by an organ organization called the Institute for Economic Affairs, uh, that put this out about a week ago. And they said there is a very good reason for a free trade arrangement. It could be a very good one. The European Union wants it, but we have to make sure it's for the whole of the United Kingdom. Isn't it a bit early to say that Chequers won't fly with the EU because this is just a part of the negotiation and perhaps there's still room for Chequers to work? Well, I don't think it does work because it doesn't work for us either. It doesn't work because we'd be half in to their rule book, not a joint rule book. That is to say all their regulations, we'd have to abide by those. Basically, we would be rule takers from the European Union. It's not what people voted for. They voted for a clean break. Uh, take back control of your borders, your laws, your money. This would leave us being adjudicated in a sense by the Court of Justice. The BC, the, uh, sorry, Greg Clark, the, uh, <coughs> the, the business secretary, said that business wants checkers, not a Canada-style deal. I spoke to the BCC earlier on and they said uh, that we just need to, what business wants is some security, some yep. uh, certainty. We need to stop debating this now and we need to move on with something as the proposal. I agree. I don't think business wants checkers. I think some business might want checkers, but Bear in mind that only 8% of our companies actually export to the European Union. There are 92% that don't have that issue. So we have to, to provide for them. And what they don't want to be is locked into a rule book that is all about just those who export, not about their domestic businesses. So we need to be able to help change regulations, make it much more relevant to the UK. We wouldn't be able to do that when it comes to checkers. So a free trade deal would do very well for us. The exporters would still be able to export. This just-in-time nonsense, by the way, it's rubbish. I used to be involved in that before. There are plenty of things that are imported from outside the EU at the moment that arrive just in time. So the idea that suddenly, unless it's from the EU, it's not going to work, that's not true. But there'll be added friction. Well, it depends what you mean by added friction. <coughs> what you do is you allow for the time that's necessary to cross the border. Uh, I don't believe there should be any. I think there should be no border checks at all. I don't think you need those. Most of the kind of stuff we're talking about is pre-declared through um, people who have got that, what they call authorized economic operators, uh, trusted traders. All this stuff can be done. So a very minimum of friction can be allowed. It's not in the interest of Europe wouldn't be in the interest of us either. What is Boris Johnson uh, limbering up for? Well, he's making the case against uh, Chequers' deal, which is what he's doing. That's all he's doing. Well, you know, he's not, there's no talk about leadership. There isn't? No, not, there shouldn't be, because the Prime Minister is here. No one's talking about getting rid of her. This is all about Chequers. He resigned over Chequers. He has to make the case why Chequers doesn't work, as I said earlier on. So I think it's quite legitimate. But, he, but is it quite legitimate to call the proposals deranged and preposterous and, and still not to step up to the plate and put your hat in the ring to take it in a different direction? Well, he's right about it. I mean, my general view is that Chequers is, is a bad deal, bad for us, bad for them, and therefore free trade is what we want. So I think Boris's language gives it a bit of colour, but it is true at the end of the day when you strip away all of that. What are you left with? You're left with a trade deal that doesn't work. But we want a free trade deal that would work, and I think we can get Europe across that line. So it's still possible to find a deal under Theresa May that Parliament will back, that she can get enough Parliament support for? If we go to a free trade arrangement, then I think Parliament almost certainly will back that at the end, because it's the best offer that's on the table. I don't think Chequers will fly. The Labour Party doesn't want to back it anyway. But I think a good free trade arrangement that gives us that flexibility, I think we'll get through Parliament. Okay.